Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode three of season two of Zach's Artful Podcast, where creativity meets conversation. I'm your host, Zach Cobb. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let me kill this one. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I have a wonderful, wonderful guest back on the show, my wonderful friend, Ari Levinson. How is it going? I'm back. <laughs> I've returned. I've returned. To bless your ears with the chorus of symphonies once more. <laughs> the beautiful music to my ears. How's it going, man? It's good to have you back. It's good to be back, and I'm very excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. Oh, yes. What might we talk about today? We are talking about famed internet stars um, in the synth music kind of sensation. Lo-fi. Lo-fi music sensation Joji, a.k.a. Uh, Filthy Frank. A.k.a. George Miller, the goat of 2016 YouTube. I, some will say the goat of YouTube. 20, in 2016, I still say he is still the YouTube music goat. Like he, his transition of like just it's shit, basically shit post music from 2016 to like genuinely beautiful music is like un like unheard of back then. You know, even now like. Where he can now have concerts sold out full of people. Is crazy. And he still acknowledges pink guy, people who dress up like pink guy at the concerts. It's so good. I, I'm so happy about that. Speaking of concerts, I actually went to this, pand- this recent Pandemonium Tour concert at the Scott Steen Center. Uh, the, sh- uh, the, the Scott Steen Center, I think that's what it's called. I believe so, yeah. The Scott, Scott, Steen, the Scott Steen Center in, at OSU. He had a concert there uh, last year, and I went to it. And it is probably the most fun concert I've ever been to. One of the moments I remember, besides him banging with music, his music had a lot more guitar in it at the live versions, it sounded a little more like lo-fi mixed with rock than like his his usual like music you'd listen on Spotify. So it sounded like it sounded like new in a way and yeah. it, it felt fresh. But I remember he played Super Smash Brothers Ultimate in the middle of the concert. They stopped the concert <laughs> on a giant projector like him and like the bandmates were playing. He uh, he played Game and Watch and lost. Oh <laughs> He lost so um, Joji's bad at Smash Brothers. Good <laughs> <laughs> could make a grown man cry. But besides that, the concert was super good. It was super cool, like like aesthetics. The music was great. He chose uh, most of the banger songs he had. I wish um, there's this song he has. It's, it's Run. I really like that song. Yeah. It's not as popular though, apparently. But I really wish he played it at this concert, but obviously that's not for me to say, oh, lackluster concert, because all the songs he did play were awesome. I was screaming, cheering. I have tons of videos of, from me at that concert, and everyone I know who's gone to it, whether I've seen videos of random people online or like one of my friends I know who also went to it, mm-hmm. like everyone enjoyed it. No one left there being disappointed. Speaking of Josie's music, I figured, you know, since we're both big fans of his music, I want to talk about, like, your history with Joji's music, you know, how you, like, were introduced to him. Obviously, we both knew him as Filthy Frank back in the day, but getting well, music-wise... Well, actually, do you, uh, do you want to start from our Filthy Frank and move along the timeline till Joji? Sure. That, actually, also, I was exposed to him, like late 2015 early 2016 where i found his videos and all that they were the talk of middle school with my uh friends and acquaintances in middle school everyone tried to emulate him and stuff where we're all people like if that was me no i would do that stupid stuff in public <laughs> no they wouldn't I, no, no. no listen if i was doing joke videos i would absolutely do that there's like one like the rat chef video where he's like getting oh. grabbed in the alley and this old lady like in the blooper tape said oh what are you doing it's like oh, i'll film in the video man. <laughs> 
and that's one of the funniest moments. Then there's the the pit my wheelchair. That's a yes. that, that's one of my favorite videos. That's that was one of his funniest uh. videos. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, like, you know, he couldn't make the content he makes then on YouTube today. It wouldn't work because it's the same reason why Leapy is here and iDubs can't make the same content they used to. Because YouTube has more rules and regulations and has to account for children viewers, even though the platform should be for ages 13 and older in legal uh, terms. Legal terms, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know why we're um, all like, oh, why are we accounting for people who are under 13 when they have a YouTube Kids app? But then again, we um, we can talk about the fact that even if you even if those rules weren't there, after Filthy Frank's last video, the the Francis and the Filth book release trailer, like, and after that book released, he was done with Filthy Frank by like 2017. Yeah, because that's when he was uh, doing he around that time he had released the that mixtape he started doing with. Um, Rising 88, the, uh, the remix songs that he was doing with them. I actually don't know as much about Rising 88. I know more about, like, just his solo uh, career. But, yeah. it, uh, but uh, again, I do know some of his Rising 88 stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I I knew a bunch, a few of Rising 88. I remember Rich Brian's music. Uh, Nikki's uh, BB was another really good one that I liked from the label. Yeah, he was, like the first like big YouTuber that like kind of like exposed the label back then. Cause it was like a mainly small label of like Asian artists, but Josie really gave them, gave it exposure. Cause it was a big, cause he was a big celebrity at that time. Well also like, again, his origins didn't start on the Filthy Frank channel. They started on disaster music. Yeah. Where, like, they had completely different views with almost completely different people. And then one day, the first Filthy Frank video came out, and the internet was changed forever. Ever. For the better or the worse, that's for up for opinion. I think it's for the best. I think it's for the best because I can still go back to his videos and love them. But he always had a place in music. He always wanted to do music. That was always what he was doing on the internet. The Filthy Frank stuff was just fun stuff they decided to do on top of it. Exactly. It wasn't even, I don't think it was even like intended to be a career or blow up as much as it did. It was supposed to be just some gag thing, uh, but it became this huge, huge thing. Huge, huge thing, yeah. And that basically cha helped change the landscape along with introducing this new subgenre of YouTube. People like iDubs, Leafy, um, H3H3 back in the day, like these edgy YouTubers that like were pushing the boundaries of like of what was okay on the platform. Yeah. Like my introduction with Filthy Frank, I found out about him through his uh the Cringe of the Week series that he used to do on the TV Filthy Frank channel. It was a series where he uh, review cringy videos of that week. Uh, it was an episode where he was talking. <laughs> it was a video where he was talking about um this this lady um that was screaming at these like pro -li like these pro-lifer people that were protesting i actually found out that that video was filmed downtown in columbus i remember like his drone and facebook videos where they just kept making robot shows and all this stuff i remember the human cake videos oh they, they took that they took that video I know, down I'm they took so that video about that dude yeah, where they got like hair and other other things, things from like YouTubers like John Tron, PewDiePie, some really big names. Jacksepticeye. Jacksepticeye. They made it, it makes it into a cake. They also did a hair cake as well. Oh, I remember the hair cake. Oh, that was, uh, it, oh, it was so uh, bad. It, it's, it was hilarious. You know, and Filthy Freak also introduced me. They collabed with some uh, with a YouTube group called uh, Children of Poseidon. Do you do you yes, know about Children I of Poseidon? Children of Poseidon? And I am a huge Children of Poseidon fan because they basically <laughs> torture themselves. <laughs> they jump in the cactuses and grab grab cactuses. They're, it's very Australian. Very Australian. Like, I remember granted, they, granted, uh, George Miller is in Australia. Yeah, they, right. He was a uh, New Yorker. Well, he lived in New York, but I remember he was born in Japan, but then uh, yeah, I think he spent a majority of his time, didn't he spend a majority of it though in Australia? Or? I believe so, yeah. And then he moved, ended up moving to New York uh, when he filmed a lot of his later stuff. Because um, 
Because, yeah, I remember, yeah, like, a lot, um, when he would go, go to his pink guy, and uh, when he, the video where he ran into that McDonald's screaming, and... The dog noise, yeah. And rolls the yellow ball on the ground. <laughs> yeah. A boss, can I have a bossy, please? Can I have a bossy, please? <laughs> but I, I remember, like, definitely during his Australia days, before uh, he, w- he would obviously, since Max Mofo and... What's that? The bigger guys. Oh, the the guys from Cold Ones. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think his name was Chad. I think it was Chad. I believe it was Chad, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to call him Chad. I know he has a different username now, but for... Based upon memory and without having to look it up, I'm just gonna call Chad. So like Chad and then like they had the, like their Donkey Kong video where like Chad got lit up, fired at and jumped into a lake and Max Buffo was dressed as Peach. And, oh yeah, and, yeah. And um I dubs and uh, uh, Filthy Frank uh, were or Joji George Miller um, yeah. were dressed up as Martin Luigi and then like when he hit the question block and got was like, yeah, what is this for? I have a question for God. Why? Why? He just screams why into the woods. <laughs> that is one of the funniest videos as well. And it's also one of uh, the funniest videos where, like, I dubs Max Mofo. And it always felt good seeing all those YouTubers come together for, like, Deadly Twister. <laughs> yes, I remember Deadly Twister. Oh, the mouse traps look so painful. Or when he put his hands on, like, the candles and burned himself. Yo. Yeah, <laughs> Oh man, this takes me back. I remember, those are some good times. I then I uh, then moving onward from the YouTube days after he left, I found out about his. I didn't know why he left. I, For I, the longest time, it was kind of a mystery. Yeah, I ended up like like uh, finding out about um, him when his debut song came out. Uh, Will he from his uh, in tongues? Uh, I think yeah. It was was it an EP or was it like a? Yeah, it was. I guess it was technically an EP because it wasn't like a big debut thing. It was it was mainly like a a big EP that he that he had like one song that that he did was from an earlier mixtape he was working on um, in like his early Joji days. The the Chloe uh, Brannix projects. Uh, hold on. Yeah, Cl- Chloe Burbank uh, Volume One uh, mixtape that he did. Um, yeah, he was. It was like these two songs um, that were like uh, two songs, "Thumb" and "You Suck, Charlie," that he would use in when he had a vlog. Uh, Joji vlogs was a thing. Uh, it was it was those two songs, and then he ended I, up scrapping that project. To be, to be honest, though, back when he was Filthy Frank, I really had no idea about any of his Joji and '88 Rising stuff for the most part. I mostly listened to his um, Pink album shit posts a lot of the time. To be honest, I only yeah. came to like know about Joji like in like late 2019, like late 2018, early 2019 is when I started getting into his stuff and became a fan of. Uh, his music career. Yeah. But, but I knew that his, like, judging career was, was a thing. I just never paid attention like, to it. Never, like, yeah, fully delved into it. And, you know, part of me kind of regrets that, but honestly, I'm okay with the joke of fan of his content that I am now. Right. But, you know, I do wish that I listened more to his stuff earlier rather than later, but... I came in at a good time before some of his other stuff, like the Nectar album came out or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah. I, I remember when my first time was in Ballads 1 and just loving it. Yeah, it took, Ballads 1 actually took me a while to get into, because I wasn't, like, super crazy about it. Like, I, I thought it was okay, but I, 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 like, it grew, it, it had to grow on me for a while before it, like, fully, like, clicked with me. Uh, it was mainly the, um... It was a specific song on there um, that I really, really liked. It was. Um, uh, Can I take a guess as to what it could be? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, try to guess. Slow dancing in the dark. No, I, I liked that one immediately. Um, it was. Oh, it was. Uh, Can't get over you. Oh, I. I can name some of the songs I really liked. I really liked Slow Dancing in the Dark. Yeah. Test Drive. One of You. Can't get over you. Yeah, right. 
No Fun. Those are those are the songs that are really. I did like Yeah Right. Um, I think, and I liked I'll See You in Forty. Those are the ones I really, I really liked. Right. I thought the R.I.P. one, R.I.P. was pretty okay. Um, I, I did like R.I.P. It's just not as memorable as some of the other stuff. Yeah, that's that was my thought. So I, I personally, yeah, didn't really care. Like, okay, he's just making chill stuff. But then when I heard Run, oh man, when I, heard I, I Run, the Necker album I think is better than oh, wow. than the Ballads one album. I agree. But then again. Ballads 1 had a lot of songs in there that are better than most of the songs in Nectar, but those songs were not present throughout the entire album. It was It's like when those albums had a bunch of okay songs, like one or two really good, good songs. One. Yeah. While Nectar had more overall quality, in my opinion. Yeah, everything just felt con- concise with each other overall. Like, I... Like, I love you, Modus, TikTok, Daylight, uh... I actually am not the biggest fan of Give Me Love. Lots of people seem to like Give Me Love. It's not my favorite. Really? I like that one. Run I, Run is my favorite Joji song, period. Yes. I love Sanctu- I love Sanctuary. Oh, I love High Hopes. That uh, Mr. Good. Hollywood. And yeah. I there are there are songs in here that I just also haven't listened to in a while, so I'd probably have to go back to because there are, I stick to a couple songs, like listen to a lot of the songs I like more than listen yeah. to an entire album. I get ya, I get ya. Like I yeah, definitely really, really love the the quality jump from that last project to to Nectar. What like, about what about uh, Smithereens? <laughs> um, I I didn't care. I thought it was I personally thought it was super boring. Uh, aside from a uh, glimpse of us, I didn't care for anything else. It sh- it shows in the numbers too. Yeah, I I, did, I was a fan of Yukon. I was a fan of Yukon. I was a fan of Glimpse of Us. I like the only and, and Night Rider. Those are the oh, those are the three songs. Both uh, both Ballads One and Nectar. I had more songs that I liked that I put in my like songs. Same only here. this this album. Granted, this album was only nine songs long. It was really it was really short compared to some of his other stuff. Yeah. But then again, he releases songs and then he releases like revamp versions of them in his albums once they come out. Gotcha. So usually he he'll release stuff individually and then eventually it'll culminate into an album. But there isn't a set schedule because, like, actually, no, there is. It usually is uh, two years. 2018 was Ballads 1, 2020 was Nectar, 2022 was Smithereens. So we'll probably, I assume, based upon that pattern, that we'll get another, another one in 2024. 2024, maybe early 2025. And I look forward to it. And I hope, I hope that there's more songs and that the quality improves because the rest of the songs, they're not mediocre. None of his songs, in my opinion, are mediocre or bad, but there are definitely boring or uninteresting ones. Yeah. They just kind of feel like background lo-fi music. Yeah, I, that's what I, I essentially felt that. It's just background stuff. Whereas in Tongues, yes, it was also very lo-fi inspired, but there is an initial concept with the that ties it together with the chains uh, that transition from will he to pills or demons to, to honest, window. To be honest, I have, um, I haven't gone back to listen to some of his older stuff in a while, so I really don't have as much of an opinion on Idiot Rising and Tongues. Anything before Ballads One, really. That's fair. I I think this one's a really good one. I like if it's it's very much enthralled with early is early. He's still finding that sound based on the early stuff that he was doing. Like, Will He is uh, kind of built up on this, like, very chilled piano. Like, it's very piano-filled compared to his later stuff that he would do. I, yeah, Will He is my, it's one of my favorite Joji songs. I love that one. Uh, Demons is another good one. Same with, I like Window. Um, my friend tr- taught me how to play World Star Money Interlude on ukulele, and like I, I only hit like one of <laughs> the four notes because I'm cursed with fat fingers and I can't play the guitar- ukulele to save my life. But I did like this. This one was another one that was originally going to be on the Chloe Burbank mixtape that he was working on, but then he, before he uh, so but it got pushed back to in tongues. Yeah, this yeah that old project ended up getting like scrapped. So now a lot of it is like considered lost media because none of it officially like finished. So like no one knows like what the official track listing was other than the two songs that were labeled as uh, Chloe Bur- like 
uh, Chloe Burbank uh, really mixed ha- uh, tracks like Thorn and so did, wait so was Chloe Burbank that was the one that only had two songs and it was never finished yeah so yeah pretty much it was only those two. and then and then World Star Money was a song that was supposed to be on that that got pushed yeah. back yeah it was uh, tagged as a um, as a Chloe Burbank uh, on SoundCloud but it never was like officially had uh, had a cover art with it so did this not release on Spotify no it was just on it's still on his SoundCloud uh, as of right now you can still go and listen to it um but yeah it's just yeah it's just like that like he's he's kind of like testing the waters of like what he really wanted to go for as an artist outside of Pink Guy well, I guess that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining me, my friend. Uh, it was very fun. There was a lot to talk about. Joji and miscellaneous. <laughs> the more the merrier. Where can people find you? Um, in this video, there should be a link to my YouTube channel. I haven't made as much lately, but feel free to check it out. I have playlists of m- me playing Smash Bros and other like videos via like, Game Arena or or my school's uh, game clubs uh, videos where we have um, videos of my matches. I've made, I've made skits. I, I'll i get back to YouTube when I feel the time is right, but please do check out my channel and subscribe because something will eventually get released when I find the time and the mindset to get to it. That's fair. You know, you don't want to rush creativity. Yeah. And thank you so much for you all listening. If you guys like this episode, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more episodes coming your way. Hope you all stay safe out there. This has been Zach Tarr from Podcast Where I'm going to remember the I'm gonna remember my tagline eventually. Hold on. Let me cook. Let me cook. <laughs> Uh, thank you for guys for watching this latest episode of Zach's Up for Podcast, where creativity meets conversation. I've been your host, Zach Cobb. Have a great day, and I nailed this take. I did not mess up at all. This is, undone. I swear, this is all done in one, one day. One take. <laughs>